Due to some graphic violence, viewer discretion is advised. What is the loneliest number that you'll ever do? Two can be as bad as one. It's the loneliest number since the number one. experience you'll ever know yes it's the saddest experience you'll ever know cause one is the loneliest it's the loneliest number one is the loneliest it's the loneliest number Amy Baxter, 26. What can you tell me? Uh, three subdural slash wounds on both wrists. No hesitation marks. The uh, cuts on the right arm are deeper, which means she started there. She's probably left-handed. That opposal saturation on the wounds, I'm guessing she was in a pool or a bathtub when she did it. So why is Sean us a suicide? Because it's not a suicide. It's a murder. Solve it. sure this was the place. Oh, you've never been to Dugan's? Oh, it's got the best Philly cheesesteak this side of, well, San Bernardino, ironically. Your note said you found something. Yeah, Amy Baxter's suicide? Not so much a suicide. It's her talk screen. The medical examiner found myocin in her system. Oh, it's a paralytic sometimes used in surgery. It's not an anesthetic. No, it immobilized her, but she would have felt everything that happened to her. It's obvious that Webb knew about this. Why didn't he just tell us? Because he's Webb. Wouldn't be enigmatic to just tell a person a thing. I mean, why did he take this case in the first place? He knows the family. Roland Baxter, Amy Baxter's grandfather. He and Webb were in the same class at Annapolis. I did some checking. Oh. So while you were checking on our boss, did you happen to find anything out about the, uh, oh, I don't know, the victim? Just that if she hadn't been pumped full of Maya said, she might have thanked her killer. She kept a diary. Listen to this. Death is the blanket I wish to enfold me. My tomb is the rest I cannot delay. So many young, sensitive people write really bad poetry. But this one had a history of suicide attempts, each one closer than the last. The only thing that prevented Amy Baxter from actually committing suicide was... was her murder. Yeah. So, what are we doing here? No peanuts, no pretzels, nothing? Uh, this is kind of a work session. That's why we build the federal government. Found three more suicides matching your girl. Two men, one woman, full bathtubs, slash wounds, needle marks. Lab's running tox screens now. I asked Mel to see if we might have a repeater. Hey. Hey. <clears throat> hey, Danny. You know, if we did boy girl, it wouldn't look as weird. Did we order yet? No, it's been talking shop. You know, death, death, pretzels. Yeah, we're just waiting on menus. Menus? Who's menus? It's Rebecca's first time. First time at Dugan's. Well, you gotta get that onion thing. Looks like a flower. Okay, am I the only one who's getting kind of sick of this place? Yes. 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 I'm just saying, there's a net cafe not half a block from here, sandwiches, 
and DSL. Because what you need when you leave your room full of computers is a cafe full of computers. <laughs> <Cake>. <laughs> <laughs> this is starting to feel like uh, dinner. I wasn't expecting. I gotta go. I've, I've got a, a thing. Excuse me. Mm. Wow. She acts like she doesn't want to be seen with us. Oh. I'm sure it's just you. So how was your thing? Thing. Yeah, you uh, you couldn't hang out with us last night. You said you had some thing. Thing was good. Good thing. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Look, I'm I'm just not very good in those types of situations. It's not something I do. Nobody says you have to. Thanks. But if there's a reason you feel you can't. Like what? Well. You, you have this secret. I mean, you, you sit here in, in this cage with three other people. Two of them don't even know who you really are. What happened to me is hardly a secret. It was made into a Lifetime movie. No, it's basic cable. It doesn't count. Look, I'm not saying you have to make some big confession, but these people, you know, they're supposed to have your back. And if there's some reason that keeps you from engaging with them, then that's not good. So just because I didn't want to have an onion flower with the gang, now I can't do my job. No, I didn't say that. But I will tell you this, the last person that sat at this desk and isolated herself ended up tearing off her own face. Lock. Thanks. Margaret Alvarez may have killed herself, but male suicides needed some help. My answer. Positive in all three cases. All right, well, let's go see what else they have in common. I'm scanning phone bills now. Credit cards are next. So far, no matches. What's that? Phil's Pizza on Sunset. Terrific. They were suicidal, and they loved a stuffed crust. I really think we're getting somewhere. Wait a minute. Give me a second. I'm the man. Come on. It's like Vegas without the buffets. What is it? It's what they call a funnel line. Different local exchanges all ending up in the same place. There's no address, but I can dial up from here. Suicide hotline. I started the prevention center myself in my apartment. A grant from social services allowed us to lease this building and uh, private donations supply the rest. Are your people paying for the services? No, it's strictly volunteer work. Oh. Some of my best counselors were actually callers at one time. If someone calls us, that means that they've decided to reach out, that they haven't fully committed to ending their lives. Just listening can sometimes be enough. Depends on who's doing the listening. We're investigating a series of murders of Ms. Armstrong. Four deaths, which first appear to be suicide, have since been ruled homicide. Oh, I see. Well. I'd be happy to assist you in any way I can. I've testified as an expert witness before. You can assist us by providing a list of names of all the people that work these phones. What? No, all four victims have been traced here. Each one of them called your hotline. I can't be right. Do you have any reason to believe that someone here would take advantage of their position as a counselor? No, that would be impossible. How many people do you currently have on your staff? I'm sorry, but if you want a list of names, you'll have to come back with a warrant. The privacy of my volunteers is every bit as important to me as the privacy of our callers. Then why do you record their calls? You know it's illegal to do so without informing them. How did you know? You just told me. Along with a list of counselors' names, we'd also like those tapes. And now that you've been informed of the law, I trust you'll revise your policies. And we won't have to shut you down. Thank you. It was Wisconsin. It was Wisconsin. I know it was. Oh. You 
kidding. That's like weeks worth of tapes. Months. We're ordering in. I think I found something. You want to talk about it? Listen to this. I feel like I'm really going to do it this time. I'm scared. I know you are. But I'm right here. Gary, extension 5438. I was just listening to one of his calls. The guy's good. I ran the bath. It's too hot to get into. I'm waiting for it to cool down. Think about that. You don't want to scald yourself. You don't want to hurt yourself. You tell her, Gary. Do you, Amy? Amy? Amy Baxter? The call was time-stamped the night of her murder. I don't want to be in pain. Nobody wants to be in pain. But we all are, Amy. Even you? Even me. Amy, can I show you my pain? What do you mean? Will you meet me? Meet me, Amy. Meet me tonight. Gary Holt, 26 years old, lives in Eagle Rock, grew up in Arcadia, no priors. Dropped out of grad school at Occidental four years ago because of a suicide attempt. He went to work at the prevention center 18 months ago. Based on his own attempt, we are working a theory that he wants to kill himself again but lacks the courage. That, or he's the most incompetent suicide hotline counselor ever. He's not gender specific in his choice of victims. No, but he is specific. If they don't seem serious, neither is he. It's actually quite particular. Tell us about his choices. All four of our known victims have a history of failed attempts. They have no close relationships that we know of. They're isolated on the brink, full of despair. Good. Be that. On the brink, full of despair, when you call us Gary Holt. I feel so alone. You're not alone, Rebecca. I'm afraid. I think I might try it again. I don't want you to do that right now, Rebecca. Okay. Promise me. Okay. I promise. Good girl. I want to meet you. There's nothing to meet. Oh, that's not true. Please. <laughs> I could fall off the face of the earth tomorrow and nobody would notice. And if they did, they wouldn't care. That's why doing this is the right thing. <laughs> I'm already dead. I'd notice. And I'd care. Look, I get off in one hour. There's a coffee house on Pico and 23rd. Can you meet me there? Okay. Can you tell me what you look like, so I'll know you? Um, I'm 5'10", and I have blue eyes and long blonde hair. Rebecca, you sound beautiful. I'll 
see you tonight, okay? <laughs> okay. Bye. So, what should I wear? job, so don't let them get too close to look. It's good you're going lengthwise. It'll elevate me from potential to determined. Ups his motivation. I think you motivated him pretty well with that phone performance. That's the right word for it. What word would you use? Look, I know that working cases with the legendary Virgil Webster is uh, it's exciting and new. Just be careful where he takes you. He won't hesitate to go to the darkest place if he thinks it'll help him win. That's the job. Well, what you and I call the job is what some people call the most awful thing they've ever seen or heard. I know how far I can push. Trust me. It's time. How are we doing? All right, remember, let him lead the conversation. Don't push. Right. Now, you uh, know the code word. If anything goes wrong, you need help? Help. Perfect. Level check, please. Testing, testing, help. And we're good to go. OK, hey, you know your story, right? Grad school, boyfriend, depression. Suicide fact. Your date just arrived. He's dressed for an evening of heavy petting and wrist slashing. He's inside. Hey, don't worry. I got your back. Wire working? Wire's working. I know my story. I'm ready for it. Hey, Rebecca. Be careful. Your actor may have impressed this guy over the phone, but face to face, it's totally different. If you're at all disingenuous, it's over. So you found the place okay? Yeah. Um, should we get a table? No, oh, we already have one. Rebecca, I want you to meet Amos, Charlotte, and Tanya. I didn't realize there were gonna be other people here. Maybe he likes to keep a herd again thin. Maybe he's not our guy. Maybe I just wrote down everything you two just said. Shh. Welcome to the group, Rebecca. Did you think it was going to be a date? I thought mine was going to be a date until I saw Amos sitting at the table. I didn't think it was going to be a date. Rebecca, do you know what you have in common with these people? We all called the prevention center. I called after I took poison. Amos tried to hang himself, but it didn't take. I had a seizure. The rope broke. <laughs> Not funny. <laughs> Come on, it's gallows humor. Literally. None of you actually wanted to kill yourselves. You just thought you did. Because you're all alone. Or at least you were. Until now. Most of the callers I get, they don't have anyone. No one to share their pain with. To share the good times. I think you deserve better than that. Are we boring you? You're not serious about making it. There's a door. Amos? You're lucky that Gary thought enough to invite you here. He's the only one at the center who's got the guts to act. Amos? 
It's okay. She's okay. I am serious about making it. Is this as big as the group gets? Attendance varies. Some people kill themselves. They show up less often. There was a, a girl here a couple weeks ago, but she only came once. Amy, Tony. Her name was Amy. So, what's your story, Rebecca? My story? Everyone here has heard everyone else's story. It's the first thing you do as a part of the group. I guess it started a few years ago, when I met. Teacher's pet's freezing up. Actually, it started when I was 10. Or it ended there, I still can't decide. We were at the state fair in Bangor. Bangor, Maine. My parents took us there every year. There was a man running the pony ride. He kept letting me cut to the front of the line, and I kept going around and getting on. And he pulled me to the side and he asked for my address. He said he wanted to bring one of the ponies to my house to visit. And I guess I'm an idiot because I gave it to him. I didn't think he'd come. We lived in Augusta, it was far. But he came. He came through my window and he took me. And I was with him for 18 months until I, until I, I'm sorry. Damn. Why just went dead? Daddy? Not yet. I'm afraid I'm going to do it again. And I need your help. That's what I'm here for. OK. We need to go get her. Hey, perfect timing. I made a date with Gary for this Saturday, one on one. The group just went their separate ways, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tanya and Gary ended up in the same place later since there was some creepy scar sex going on. Never got a last name on any of them, but I saw Charlotte's license plate. Name is paid with a credit card, so we can get that. What? We were partly right. Gary Holt is attracted to vulnerability. Men, women, they're erotic for him as long as they feel powerless. They all seem to be into that stuff. But Gary was the only one to touch someone's scars. That's significant. Suicide fetish? Yes. I want Gary under 24-hour surveillance. Already got two undercovers en route. Join him, Danny. If he spooks, he'll rabbit. Danny Lowe. We got another one. So this is Gary Holt. He sounded shorter. Please forgive me. I was only trying to help Gary. Sure is tidy when the killer takes themselves out. Yes, it would be. Side note seems to match all the other samples we found. Rebecca must be thinking he was forced to write it. 
and we should listen to her because all of a sudden she's Elizabeth freaking smart. She's got that special abductee sixth sense everybody knows about. She wasn't Elizabeth smart. She was Becky George, same creepiness, less Mormons. I, I still can't believe it. You knew, didn't you? From the beginning? Oh, I had a, I had a friend with security players. Uh, all I know is every time I look at her, I'm gonna imagine her all tied up, but in a negative way. Terrible. I just hate that she didn't think she could trust us enough to know. I don't think she trusts many people. I guess it's not how many you trust. It's just if you pick the right ones, right? Whoever staged this was good. Our killer is obviously expert in more than one mode of suicide. Yes. But this wasn't a thrill kill for him. It was pragmatic. Which means that old whoever it was knew that we were investigating Gary. Yes. Do you think that could be because you told him? You had a cover story worked out that you chose not to use. Why? You told me not to lie. I told you not to get caught in a lie. Getting caught in the truth can be even more dangerous. And you should remember that the next time someone encourages you to share everything, even someone with pure motives like Gary, he's innocent, but he's the link. There's no sign of forced entry. He knew his killer. He trusted him. That was a big mistake. Tracy, right? Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm Aunt Amos, I'm one of Gary's people. They told me about the group he was running. I I'm sorry about that. He was breaking the rules. I just came from his house and he's not breaking the rules anymore. Well, um, I I'm, so I'm sorry. Let me put this bag away. It's, it's a, such a hassle. You're not gonna go anywhere until we talk. Don't well, look at me like that. Gary told me about you. He said you got some experience at this kind of thing. It's okay. It's okay. I, I can help. You're sick. Danny and Mel are following up the rest of Gary's group. How could I have missed this? We all missed it. Gary wasn't obsessed with death. He was obsessed with life. He wasn't like the others. He didn't deserve this. Wait a second. What are you saying the others did deserve it? What? No. Of course not. Oh. That could sure sounded like it. I mean, they wanted to die, right? Yes. No. I don't know. You really don't. I can't believe I missed this. I was actually worried that you related to these victims too much. That if Webb made you get in their heads... But you can't get in their heads, can you? You don't understand these people. You have contempt for them. That's ridiculous. No, it's understandable. They gave up. You fought like hell. You didn't need anybody to save you. You didn't need anyone's help. Should I be ashamed of that? No. You were brave, but the bravest thing these people ever did was to reach out and pick up that phone. That was their mistake. See how well it worked out for them. When you were in that coffee house, you weren't really talking to us. <laughs> you were just exploiting the rawest part of your life just to fool Gary, to solve the case. That's why we're here, Paul, to solve a case. Do you forget that? The case isn't exactly solved, is it, Rebecca? Look, don't you think maybe if we gave this thing a shot together, we might be able to solve it? We are. <laughs> no, you're still 
working it alone. You're isolating. You're just like these victims. I am not like these victims. It's the weakness. That's what keeps you from really connecting with these people. Rebecca, if that's true, you're going to keep missing things. And you're going to make a mistake. There's nothing more to learn here. I'm going back to the office. Start over. You hate their weakness. Delia, it's Paul Ryan. I need you to pull a file for me and check something. actually did have a couple of bags way in the back. Tea doesn't go bad, does it? Sure you're gonna be okay? Please stay. For just a little bit. Where's your bathroom? I'll be right back. feel stronger when someone else is helpless. Tim, I think it's like a cure. Listen, I just wanted to say that it's OK. You didn't say anything before. Thank you. I remember when it happened. I was in high school. They made us have a safety assembly to show us how to keep ourselves safe. And on Sundays with my family, we used to light candles for you in church. Oh. So what about this lead? We, we could check it out together. I'm still working on it. That background's worked up on Gary's fetish group. Oh, great. I think I got something, too. Hey. Hey, Rebecca back yet? FBI, open up. Saddlebags under all that are money. <laughs> Sis, unsub for real this time. Answering machine. Just keep trying to sell. Tracy Grace Armstrong, lady from the hotline. Keep reading. Rebecca, Melody, I'm trying you again. 
Born in Denver, Heatherwood Elementary. Ah, mother and father died December 26, 1972. Guess how? Suicide. Double. In the bathtub, found by 10-year-old Tracy. All right, I'll call. Let's hear it. Your parents, they abandon you in the worst possible way. What do you do? You blame yourself. It's like divorce, only a million times worse. But until you get older and you get some therapy in you. The older you realize this wasn't your fault. It was their fault. They weren't strong enough. Are we going to the hotline? I already called shotgun. See, weakness destroyed your life, so you set out to punish the weak. Tracy Armstrong is putting herself back in that room 30 years ago with her parents. Only now she's the one in control of the situation. How'd you work this? Rebecca out. Mel. Is that your boyfriend? No. No. I gotta do it right. You wanted my tape so badly. And you know what? I got a doozy for you. It's a call that came in last night. You want to hear it? I've been listening to it over and over. We're friends now. Probably. I know why you did it. <laughs> Poor Gary. You really fooled him. I'm afraid. Oh. Listen friend. to all your whining. I don't want you to do that right now, Rebecca. But the more that I listened, I started to hear something else. Please. Make it long to face the earth tomorrow and nobody would notice. But if they did, they wouldn't care. That's why doing this is the right thing. It's true. I Isn't it? I've heard a thousand of okay. these calls. I can tell the fakes. Okay. Can you tell me what you look like? Um, if you I wanted can. to die so badly, why didn't you just time. do it? Hmm? You because you're a coward. All talk, no action. Well, don't you worry about a thing. That's what I'm here for. FBI, we're looking for Tracy Armstrong. Well, she's gone for the day. Where does she go? I'm not sure. No sign. Look, it is very important that we speak to Miss Armstrong, OK? Were you here when she left? Yeah, she was really upset. One of our counselors, Gary. Yes, we, we know about what happened. Now, we went to her house. She wasn't there. Maybe she's still with that guy. What guy? There was this guy outside. They said he collapsed. He had a seizure or something. He, one of Gary's groups, uh, the, the male, said something about having a seizure when he tried to hang himself. Amos. You got an address? That ain't far. The cuts in the first arm have got to be very deep. So it's going to hurt like hell. That's one of ours. One more cut, and then we'll do the next arm.
your arm hurt much? No. A ton. It's late. Don't you have some other place to be? Not really. Find one. So they bring in a jackhammer. Tear up this guy's freshly cemented patio. I'm not gonna wanna hear this, am I? There's like 20 bodies. Yeah, some of them from the 70s, all boys. Can we ever talk about sex? You know, like everybody else on the planet? Unfortunately, we were. Which is why I never, ever had a sleepover at my piano teacher's house. <laughs> <laughs> you played the piano? So, can I join you guys? Yes. Yeah. 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 Sit down. <laughs> That's pretty. Is that an orchid? Mm-hmm. And it's edible. Legally has to be. Looks good. I think I'll have one. What's it called? The Tahitian Maiden's Dream. <laughs> of course. <coughs> so really, the piano. <laughs> Don't encourage him. He'll bring in his Casio and play a rendition of Gentle. Gentle's very underrated. <laughs> <laughs> I took flute in high school. Tuba, the, the big sousaphone kind. I did time on the clarinet. <laughs> <laughs> I had to. I had to short a few credits my senior year. <laughs> All right. Clarinet. <laughs> 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 